Hello and thank you for joining this session. My name is Simon Davidman from Imperius and I'm going to be talking to you about architectural exploration for artificial intelligence and machine learning accelerators and I'm going to be joined in a little while by Duncan Graham, one of my colleagues, who's going to show you how our advanced tools really help with this architectural exploration. With this requirement for our embedded devices and solutions to have machine intelligence, there's a tremendous need for more and more compute. It's just exploding how much compute is required. And while we require more compute, we're getting more and more transistors, but we're not getting a performance gain. And the number of cores is going up to try and give us the throughput of the software on the hardware. That's the trend, parallel cores. And the type of computation that we need is for the um, AlexNet, which is a, an image recognition algorithm, a billion multiplier accumulates to, in the training. And x86 doesn't cut it. And, uh, and, and the trend is to, towards special processing. So you need faster cores, often with custom extensions and acceleration. It's got to be the correct parallel. And you need to know that your algorithm is going to run well on the configuration of hardware that you select. So there are many different types of hardware. You can have uh, accelerated um, external accelerators where you add an accelerator to your CPU with a simple sort of scalar processor. You maybe can add vector extensions or you can add vector extensions and custom instructions and custom extensions in there to get the performance that you need. And then when you have your cores, you need to put them together in certain configurations, which can be relatively simple to complex and can be very even heterogeneous in, in the arrays of processes with a lot of communication between them. So there's a lot of complexity in the, in the individual cores, but also the architectures. As I said, the cores need sort of accelerators. And one of the key accelerators that in the RISC-V world people are adding are the vector extensions, which is a standard part of the RISC-V uh, instruction set. And we have our simulator uh, provides simulation technology for these virtual platforms and tools. And it's used by a lot of lead customers for early software development. And we have all the implementation of the vectors. And recently, Andy's, one of the leading IP companies of RISC-V, has uh, announced their cores with vector extensions and they are using the uh, their customers are using the Imperius simulator as a reference for those as a golden reference so we have the vector instructions in the simulators and here's an example of uh, whether we're working with a US customer on an AI ML um, engine it's got many many cores in it and over half of them actually have the vector uh, extension in them and they're using the reference models and the virtual platform to provide an environment for the software stack development and with the full stack running with cross-compiled software it still takes a couple of hours of simulation to run the software on it because of just the number of processes and the amount of computation that's required in it but what 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 um the simulation allows is that you can configure the platform and reconfigure it and try different architectural changes to explore the performance option and of course you're running the real software what will end up being a production binaries so you see how those interact with the hardware and you can often have these models maybe a year or more before your RTL commit so that you can run your software on your hardware on models of your hardware to ensure it works the way you want. And of course, once you've got these models, you can kickstart the hardware DV process to use the same models. Another example, Japanese partner, which is um, doing um, the AlexNet algorithm and their, their platform they're building has uh, actually 17 64-bit RISC-V cores with vectors and an ARM Cortex-A57 to control it and communicate with it. And the algorithm for the AlexNet for the neural network is um, has a tremendous amount of computation um, a thousand million a billion max to do an, a, an analysis in it and it, and it's split into several different sort of um, uh, layers and these compilation layers have have the computation in it. and what what the partners done is they've split several of the convolution layers onto different cores so that they can uh, basically parallelize the performance an example of their platform here with the risk fives along the top the ARM core, and each one has a UART. And when they simulate it in our environment, what they get is a console for each of the different cores so they can see what it is, uh, how it's communicating, what it's doing. I mean, there's also performance analysis, so you can actually see the, the throughput going through each of the cores. And with it, there's also a debugger so that you can look inside the cores 
at the uh, instruction sets as they're running. So yes, of course, you can look at the, uh, the RISC-4 instruction set and see all the registers and everything, but in the same debugger, you can also just switch across and look inside the ARM as well. So you can really debug your software and see how it's running in the whole platform. You have a holistic view of the whole platform. The key points for this, this partner is yes, they can simulate the heterogeneous platform. They get a debugger so they can see the whole thing in, in one go. And it's extremely fast. And actually it's only about 10 times slower than the native x86 execution. So it's an extremely fast simulation platform. So if you're going to increase the performance of your system and your processor, how are you gonna do that? Well, of course you can move to multi-core. You can even change your multi-core configurations and have different architectural uh, configurations. If you've got accelerators, you can tune them, add more accelerators. If you've got a vector, you can change the parameters of the vector engines, change your pipeline, change your memory architecture. And a key feature of RISC-V is to add custom instructions. And that's what we're gonna talk about here. Now, if you're adding extensions, you know, it's quite a complex process because you've got to add the extensions, you've got to analyze it and everything. We have a whole flow here. And what I'm now gonna do is to pass to my colleague, Duncan, who's gonna go through this flow and demonstrate it. Hello, welcome. I'm gonna show you this example. I'm gonna start off by looking at the characterization of the C applications using the Imperus uh, env simulation environment and tools. So within our C application, we can uh, trace and debug, we can add timing to the simulation, and we can do function profiling and timing information. So I'm gonna run the first, first section, which I'm just gonna run instruction accurate simulation of a, a C application that I'm interested in, in getting information and I'm eventually gonna add custom instructions to. So my C application, it reads uh, some data from a data file and line by line, we process the line. We're actually implementing a CharChar20 style of algorithm. Uh, so we have some processing elements on the word of data, and you can see that these four functions all equate to the same bit manipulation and rotation with a different value of rotation uh, being used each time. So let's run our simulation. The simulation is using semi-hosting here, so the algorithm can read um, information from the host system. So this gives us access to the host standard in, standard out, the file system, etc. So we've got the result of our algorithm execution. We can see we've run just under 2 billion instructions. And the simulation time was around about just under 20 seconds of time. So this is a, as a instruction accurate simulation. This is the expected time using the MIPS rating we've defined for this processor. Now we want to look at uh, adding some timing information and the cycle approximation that allows us to achieve. So we've run exactly the same simulation. You can see here now though we've enabled our cycle timing estimation and the overall time now has, if you remember it was previously just under 20 seconds, now 25 seconds. So we're actually giving a more realistic impression of how long the application will take to execute. And now we want to look at where we're spending our time. So we enable the tool, the function profiling tool on our application execution. So now with the function profiling complete, we, you notice we've uh, created a profile information graph. So here we can see the functions that are being executed. We've got our four functions, which are the um, algorithm. These are all being called from the process line function. And in turn, the four functions are calling into our, our uh, algorithm. And you can see here we're spending 30% you know, of the time of this application execution on this data set is spent in the uh, one function of processing the core of the algorithm. So now we've profiled our application uh, we want to start adding custom instructions. So now let's look at designing the instructions, uh, adding these into the application, loading the new in custom instructions to the model, and also adding the time information for our custom instructions. So first of all, let's look at the change we make to our application. So you can see here we've got the same core algorithm. We're still processing a line of data at a time, but now our process line function is actually using some embedded uh, assembler that defines our 
new instructions, the decodes for our new instructions. If we execute that on the instruction accurate uh, simulator, we can see immediately we take a, an illegal exception. So I've only executed just over a thousand instructions. The simulator has identified that we're attempting to execute a, a custom one decode space instruction. This is uh, causing an illegal instruction because the, we haven't got the extension enabled in the model. So the next thing to do obviously is to uh, create our custom instruction. The custom instruction is created uh, using the standard VMI APIs. We create decodes for the instruction. So this is the definition of the bit patterns for each of the four instructions that we're creating. And we create the behavior of the instruction. So here we're creating the, uh, or telling the simulator what function provides the behavior. And you can see here we're using the same function and again we're passing the different rotation value. So our, our implementation can be either a, a C function and reusing our previous C algorithm or the implementation I'm going to do here is to implement fully with the morph time API. So you can see that we create the uh, XOR and the rotation by reading the values from registers and immediate value from the instruction. So now with our additional library loaded, we can run our simulation. So here you can see we've loaded our custom library. We have the same result of execution, but now the simulation time is reduced from 20 seconds down to just under seven seconds. And again, we can run the same profiling and cycle approximate simulations that we did on the C application. In terms of the timing information, then we have a basic definition that we've created here for providing timing information. And in it, we add the definition of our instructions. And you see that we've put them all into the same group. And then for this group, we're defining that the instructions will actually take two cycles. So there's, a, so there's a cycle penalty for using these custom instructions. With that timing model loaded, we can again run the simulation. And now we see the simulation time has extended to just over nine seconds. So our timing has pr information has been used to determine a more uh, cycle approximate definition of how long that will take to run. But also this can be used in our, our profiling. So again, we're going to run the standard same profiling tool, but now on the application um, using the custom instructions and with a processor model that includes the custom instructions. So again, we've generated the profiling information. And now you can see that uh, we see that the process lines, the whole of the processing of a line now falls down to just 14%. So if you remember previously, we had the uh, process line uh, plus the uh, functions to implement the algorithm were occupying well over 50-60% uh, of overall time. So we've shown the development of a custom instruction uh, applied to the uh, custom instruction space of the RISC-V uh, processor model. What I'm going to show briefly now is that we can uh, use all the same usual tools with our custom instructions. So we can do tracing, we can do de debugging. We saw that we could do the same profiling of the application. So let's start out just by enabling uh, tracing. So this is sort of giving us low level information of the execution. We've got tracing enabled just for a small portion of the time of the execution. So from uh, instruction 1330 for about 20 or 30 instructions. But we can see here that we have our function process line then within the function process line we're calling the custom instructions and where the custom instruction is modifying the register we can see that we're showing the changes to that register so let's bring our application up into our our debugger so i'm going to start off by manually putting a breakpoint on main of my function and then uh, executing to that point. So you can see here we have full source debug. We have visibility of all of our uh, registers within the core 
of the processor. And we also have additional information about the processor itself, of where, where we are. All of the supervisor and system registers are available to us to read. And we can see how many instructions we've executed. We set a breakpoint, run to that breakpoint, and then I can step into my function that's going to call my custom instructions. instructions. So I'm just going to turn off uh, GDB mode because what I want to do is uh, ensure that when I open my disassembly window the uh, decodes for the custom instructions is coming from the the model and not from the uh, using GDB mode. So we'll turn GDB mode back on now and now we're in instruction mode and we'll let's step through our code. And you can see we can step into our instructions as we execute the instruction modify A0, we see the register being modified and we have the source line debug. So with our custom instructions, we've got the full source line debug capabilities available to us automatically in the, our development environment. So in these initial stages, we've looked at the characterization of applications, the development of custom instructions and using those custom instructions. What we also are going to talk about briefly is actually doing some analysis of the instruction. So this is for the uh, developer of the instructions uh, to find out whether we've done fully, uh, fully tested uh, the instructions, uh, how well we've done that testing, and also how well we've implemented the behavior of the instruction. And we'll look also that we can generate, automatically generate documentation, which includes the information about our custom instruction work. So first of all, I'm going to look at the uh, coverage information. So we're running this load and loading a, a tool. This is monitoring all of the instruction execution while we run our test application. And then the report at the end we, we obtain shows us uh, how much of the execution uh, is spent for each of the different instructions. But more importantly, it's showing us also instructions that have never been executed. So these obviously instructions that if this was part of our custom group would be instructions that we needed to improve our testing. We can also look at the profiling of the uh, instructions. And just to give you a, an example, I'm actually going to run the profiles using two different implementations of the same instruction. So behaviorally, we have exactly the same result, but we've implemented them differently. One's using the C call, which we're running now. And if we look at the custom instructions, as they're peering our log, you can see they're quite high up. The per instruction time spent is quite high. So 15 picoseconds, 11 picoseconds. And um, so you know, we may want to look at uh, re-implementing. And we can do that as a, using the morph time, which we did. And this is the other implementation. So here we can see we're looking again at the same profiling information, but now our custom instructions the time spent in them has drastically reduced. So we've got a much more efficient implementation. So thank you for watching the example. Uh, this is available uh, to download and run yourself. And I'll now hand you back. Thanks very much, Duncan, for showing us that demonstration. Now, what Duncan showed was our simulation platform running. He also showed a little bit of the debugger and some of the analysis tools, because it's a complete system from Imperius. Not only can we do the architectural exploration, but with our high quality reference models, our model is, is a reference that can be used for the hardware DV. And recently we had an announcement with uh, Mellanox's subsidiary of NVIDIA, where they're using us as the reference for their hardware DV for the very complex new processor that they are building. So in summary, AIML applications need different configurations and custom hardware to obtain required performance goals. And fast simulations key to allow you to, to, to develop your software maybe a year before you've got RTL even committed. So a long time before silicon. And we have the performance analysis for different sort of hardware configurations. We can run the full heterogeneous platforms with a variety of different processes in there and provide this analysis and um, profiling. And our reference model has all the features in there so that you can extend it and develop it with your custom instructions and, and state. And also it can be used as a reference for validating your silicon. So if you're looking to do architectural exploration, please do come and talk to us. At this conference, we've got a virtual booth. So step by and start, come by and talk to us there or go to some of the links on the website or send us an email. Thank you.